All right, uh, first step is over. You know, we've cut our ears off. This is a uh, witch without ears. Uh, now I want to lay her down. And obviously her big shoulders are in the way, but I want to lay her down because I'm going to take a little alginate snap mold of this area that we just did. So um, I was thinking, you know, you can lay her down on anything. I was thinking a bag of white clay, but that is uh, too tall to get a nice horizontal angle for her. So I happened to figure out just a minute ago that this nice pillow of AccuCast, which is our alginate, is just about the right height. So I'm going to put that there. I'll put a little foam pad on it to protect our sculpture. And I'm going to stick her like that. So that's pretty good. What I have ready at the table is everything you're going to need. I have plaster bandages, buckets. I have water sources ready. I have alginate ready, uh, white clay. I have my famous clay cutter that I believe you saw in the last episode. And we're going to get to get to work here. So the first thing I want to do, I'm going to cut a nice thick slab of white clay. I want to get my mold knife out, which is here. So there's a fettling knife, this is actually called. With a fettling knife, we fettle. And here's our slab of clay. I'm just going to cut it in half. And all I'm using this clay for is to prop her up so that she's not going all over the place while we're trying to do that. Now, we can take our adjustable clay cutter, which you just saw me use. And we're going to change the uh, to roughly about a half an inch. And I take another slice off my clay and move that aside. And all I'm going to do is, I've got a straight edge. I'm going to cut a wall, cut some strips, about an inch and a half, what have you. It's not critical. I'm going to make a little bit of a wall around here so I don't have to make a gigantic mold. I don't have to get alginate all over my sculpture. This is a very crude wall. I'm not going to get too carried away with it. I am thinking about what my final piece is going to be and how big it's going to be. And I'm also going to look at the ear and make sure for the final buck, the, the, uh, the positive that this ear will be permanently sat on and completed, um, that there's enough plaster around the ear. So what we're doing is we're taking a mold here. We're going to make a plaster piece that this ear will be then sit on and be finished, and then a mold will be made on top of that. So we're making a plaster piece that has all the witchy textures that I'm going to match this down to. So I'm just making sure as I'm making my little mold here, nothing has to be perfect, but we'll work as cleanly as possible. I'm just making sure there's enough plaster and which texture represented around the ear. And we can make a cut here, because that's all we need. Put that together. Again, this is, this is crude, but it's fine. We can clean it all up later. I'm going to add a tiny bit here, because as I pour my alginate, that's the dip where it's all going to run out. So I'm just going to add a little bit there. So, I mean, that looks, that looks like a healthy amount of detail and plaster and clay around the ear. When you're working mold walls like this, try not to do what I'm doing right now. Try not to get in there with your fingers and, and uh, you know, make all kinds of fingerprinty stuff. Try to just use your clay as a wall. You stick it, you leave it alone. All right? You butt the next one up, you maybe smush a little bit together, but try to, try to work cleanly. You know, if, if that's your wall and you stick it there, you're done. Don't get in there and, you know, I see all kinds of beginning mold makers get in there and they're, they're doing this and trying to make it all perfect and they end up with that. They end up with this horrible lumpy mess. 
So here we have uh, AccuCast alginate, um, prosthetic grade alginate. Uh, you can use any brand of alginate. My recommendation, honestly, for this work is buy a nice cheap um, alginate. Because this is basic, basically we're making a lot of waste molds. The, we call them waste molds because you're going to pour one thing out of it and throw it away. Okay? So don't, you know, don't buy prosthetic grade cream, you know, the very expensive stuff. This is, this is perfectly fine. Um, there might even be cheaper solutions, I'm not sure. And we're not going to need a ton of this. That's probably more than plenty. This is alcohol. I'm just cleaning a little. I'm smoothing some clay and cleaning a little clay dust. You could use water if you were in love with your sculpture and didn't want to smooth it. But I'm also smoothing some sculpture in here as we go. OK. So there's that. We have our alginate. We have our water source. We need another bucket for plaster bandages. So we'll just put a little water in there. Hot water will make your bandages go faster. This is not hot water. So always uh, alginate. Always add water into the powder, never the opposite way around. Uh, completely different than um, stone. Stone, you add powder into the water. This is the opposite. So you just mix that up. Thick is fine for this. You're just capturing uh, not a lot of detail. You're just getting a form, basically. You want, you want what detail is there, but that's not even finished detail yet. That is, that is uh, the rough approximation of finished detail. You're going to see, as we go through this process, you're going to finish all the finish, finish, finish detail on the separate little molds. So you're not done sculpting. There's still sculpting to be done. So there we are, nice and creamy. It could have been thicker. It's fine like this. I'm just going to put it in there, really kind of mush it down, make sure I am getting whatever detail there is. You could put it in with a brush if you'd like. Um, again, you're more worried about basic form. So this is getting thicker already. And the next thing we're going to do, once this thickens up, is just put a little plaster banded shell around it to hold it in place. What we're going to be doing in this process is a lot of little mini life casts like this. Once we cut this apart and put it in the water, we're going to take all the clay pieces off, except, well, you'll see, the, the head part will be the first part we finish, the cowl, because that'll be the first part we put on the actress will be the, the overall headpiece. All the other pieces are going to key onto that. So we will finish off the headpiece first, and then we'll slowly start adding back the other pieces and taking little molds so that they all fit together with their wrinkles. It'll, be, uh, it'll, uh, it'll all come clear as we do it. I know right now that might seem a little mysterious. Uh, you could use gloves for this if you wanted to. I find it. this is such a gummy material that I, I find it hard to work in gloves with this. But uh, this is perfectly safe, inert. You can put this in your mouth, although it doesn't taste good. They have separate dental alginate for mouth castings that has a minty taste. This tastes like chalk. And just waiting for it to set up. And we're going to do the same thing to the other side. They actually give a uh, ratios on this for how you mix it. I just mixed it by eyeball because I've been doing it for years. But they actually, on this particular brand, they say a good average consistency is approximately four to one. That would be two ounces of water, or two ounces of powder to eight fluid, fluid ounces of water. Four ounces of powder to 16 fluid ounces of water. Eight ounces of powder to 32 fluid ounces of water, and so on. Um, so they actually give you ratios on this one. That's uh, that's news to me. Um, you'd have to do a test and see what their ratio gives you. You don't want, ob obviously this could have been thicker than what I made it, but it's fine. You wouldn't want it any runnier than this, so you'd have to try out their ratios in a little cup or a little test batch to make sure that that's not, their, their idea of what's good is not uh, too runny. It's definitely gotten to be like jelly or jam on the top here. It's not running anymore. It's not going to go anywhere, but it's not quite set up enough for us to do our thing yet. While I'm waiting for that to completely harden, 
I'll rip up a few plaster bandages. We're not going to use many. We won't use more than a roll. I like to make them two ply thick. Some people go three, some people go four. By two ply, I mean I fold it over once. So it's two bandages instead of one. I think we went through some of this on the life casting when we did uh, Cynthia's hands. It's kind of whatever you like. I do at least two ply. I haven't used a single layer plaster bandage in years and years and years. Probably not since I was first starting out. But you could fold this over once. You could fold it over twice. You could fold it over four times. Whatever gets you through. Um, personally, in this instance, because we're only really trying to capture a form here, you could have made six layer plaster bandages and just done, done one layer on here and been done. I like just the two layers to capture all the detail and get around all the nooks and crannies and all that. But then you could start backing it up with four layers, six layers, whatever, just to get through it. Um, so this is, this is a holdover of uh, life casting, which is what we're basically doing here. Uh, okay, our alginate is set up here, and we're going to get to the plaster bandage part. But because we're at Legacy Effects today, I thought uh, I could show you a different way to go about this tool. This is my famous uh, adjustable clay cutter that we love so much. If you don't have one of these or don't have access to one of these, uh, uh, a lot of times you see the, the, the two dowels with a, with a wire between them, a garrote, if you will, or even if you won't. That is a clay cutter. How you get a nice uh, controlled thickness like this, if you just take that and go across a, a, a block of clay, this gives you a nice, smooth, even slab. There's another way to go about it, and I just happened to find these here at Legacy today because they have all the fancy stuff. Um, this is another thing you can do. This is a board with, uh, they have machined aluminum on here. That's a half an inch. You can see that? It says half inch. They also have ones that are a quarter inch, and you can make it whatever you want. Now, if you don't have access to nice machined aluminum, and who does? Uh, you can just glue some paint sticks here. You could take some paint sticks, pretend this is just a board. You can just glue paint sticks, hot glue them down until they are the desired height. Right? So three, maybe four paint sticks makes a half an inch. So take that away and put that there instead on each side and you've got a half inch clay cutting board. So this is the garret that I'm talking about, or the garrote. Uh, it's a wire and two pulls, okay? Cheap and easy, you can find these any sculpture house, any art store. If you make a board with paint sticks or a nice machined aluminum, you can put your clay on there like that. You put the wire down tight and you just slice through, always keeping the wire tight onto there. Then when you pull this off, upend it, you have a nice clean slab of clay. Just wanted to show that for all you mold makers out there. So you don't think I have something fancy that you don't have. You can make this really, really easily with a paint stick and a board. Okay, back to this. We are now ready to take this clay wall off. This is set up. You can see it's nice, hard. Not, it's not hard. The material never gets hard. It's always kind of squishy. And you take your clay wall off. OK. And you can take some of this little delicate stuff away. That's not going to buy you anything. You can take a nice sharp tool. This is really jelly-like uh, alginate. I'm not sure I'm in love with it, but it'll work. It'll work just fine. There we go. Now, uh, we are going to put some plaster bandage around that to make, it hold, make sure it holds its shape. So we have our water. I have warm water this time. Uh, because I have seen the error of my ways, and instead of using these two ply, I'm going to put two together and have four ply. Put it in the water. Squeeze it out real good. And I'm just going to put it around the edge to start with. Now all this is for is to make this jiggly jello here of alginate just keep its shape. 
Again, two two plies together makes a four ply. Squeeze it out real good. Don't want it all runny. I'm folding it over again, so I literally have an eight ply around the edge. Make sure there, the uh, plaster bandage is all meshed together really, really well when you put it on there. Make sure it, there's no, not a lot of air under it, that it's all laying down nicely. Now we're going to cap that. Now, because I use so many ply together, that's probably all the plaster bandage that I need on there. Just using this extra piece because this, this end didn't get as much love as that end got. You gotta make sure the children are all treated equally. And we're just gonna let that set up now. Now normally I would use extra fast set. This is, today we're dealing with fast set, which is not extra fast. Um, so we're gonna have a moment here. Once this is set, we're gonna pull it off, flip it upside down. We're gonna put hydrocal into it and make a stone positive.